Hello and welcome <clears throat> to Indo World Cup Daily. Well, after Ireland's 1-0 defeat to Australia in Sydney yesterday, Nigeria and Canada played out a nil-all draw in Ireland's group in Melbourne earlier today. Uh, Dave Kelly is back in Brisbane. Uh, Dave, that nil-all result was probably a twist few saw coming and it certainly kind of opens this group, doesn't it? Yes, I think um, Group B had been the proverbial group of death, uh, as we labelled it when the draw was made. It, it, it seems like it could be the group of slow death, uh, given the quality of the two games we've witnessed so far. Uh, Ireland-Australia was pretty dour uh, in Sydney last evening. Um, and uh, from the glimpses I saw of um, uh, Nigeria-Canada today, um, the quality didn't really... Um, exceed to any great level um oddly it wasn't on free to air tv uh, we arrived here uh, this morning uh, for the half 12 uh, melbourne kickoff in ami park and um it, it wasn't on uh, it's was only on subscription on streaming um service which is um you know for the uh, i suppose they paid the rights up to sports paid the rights and uh, the white runner FIFA Guru would be happy with that, but um, just in terms of going the game, just seems a bit odd. I mean, they did get a record, a record crowd for Thursday's game, a record crowd for women's soccer, surpassing the um, Olympic uh, Games clash against Japan. They're about two million, but you know, Australia has a population of twenty-five million, as you know. So um, my maths aren't great, but that's not a great percentage given the um, enormity of the occasion last night. But yeah. Um, it would seem that on the face of it, um, given, I suppose, the disappointment of the missed opportunity we spoke about last night, that the draw in the other game could seem to uh, ameliorate matters in terms of the pathway. <laughs> Excuse me, but also um, it reminds us that Nigeria, despite being the lowest ranked team in the group, are actually um, uh, a decent a decent outfit Um they're again from the brief glimpses I saw. Mm. Um, they're they play a four three three. Their their attacking unit didn't really function um that brilliantly. Although they did fashion a couple of opportunities. Um, they seem to have trouble at left back. That could be a difficulty they might uh, have to address uh, the next day. Um, they they were pretty solid in defence and um. They had a, did a decent midfield, although their their best midfielder was sent off for a, a, a pretty pretty rough challenge towards the end of the game, which I would have to check. Uh, apologies, I haven't done so, but whether that may uh, whether it's a violent conduct um, effort, which may rule out out of the uh, Ireland game, obviously. But yeah, in terms of Canada, I mean they've had their struggles recently. They haven't scored. I think they've only played four matches in this calendar year. They've had their pay disputes and. Bed Priestman, the English manager, threatened to quit, and um, I think they've, um, I think they were blanked in three of those four games. Uh, they, 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 they're not a very open and enigmatic side. So <laughs> Wednesday, Wednesday could be grim in Perth. Um, if, if we're trying to hope for um something different in terms of style, but mm. you know, there's an element that neither side can really possibly, um. Uh, resign themselves to just getting a point. You know they can't take solace in a point really if they want to advance. Given that we've seen from Nigeria, albeit they've obviously played Australia, but um, Australia's form is not great either. So um, yeah, it's 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 made it intriguing. Mm, yeah, um, it, it could be a slow bicycle race to the end of it, but it's it's certainly intriguing and it's really really tightened it up in terms of like who's going to get out of this pool, this group. Yeah. Group B. Well, well, I suppose, um, like yesterday, the favourites uh, to win the game, uh, Canada awarded yeah. a penalty. But unlike yesterday, uh, Christine Sinclair's effort uh, was saved. I, I think kind of coming into this tournament, Dave, maybe a lot of the kind of focus was on the opening game against Australia, co-hosts, um, large crowd in attendance. And but Canada, we know they are the highest ranked team on paper. They could be the toughest team in this group, seventh in the world, current Olympic champions. But I'd imagine that Vera Powell, perhaps maybe a little like, uh, well, maybe not quite like uh, Sam Kerr being ruled out yesterday, you know, that they would get a bit of, you know, belief out of that, out of that game, you know, that, you know, this group is certainly still there for them. 
Yeah, and uh, like it, 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 it's it's the response of both teams to that now. You mean mm. you know does 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 maybe any sense of um anxiety from from the management that you know they might have to radically reshape things and attack as we alluded to yesterday whether that be uh I wouldn't have thought so Abby Larkin starting um I think she's at the moment an impact player but again that would be a bold adventurous move yeah but has Vera ever shown that in the past day from what you've seen you know what I mean I mean this is obviously a very very different stage I mean she I suppose she hasn't really shown before that she could make a switch like that. Really, has she? Has she? But now is the time not, for her yeah, character not, no, change, almost. Yeah, no, no, not not um, not in terms of radically reshaping a, a thing. There, there have been a couple of kind of personnel surprises in 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 in, in all lines of the field, but nothing nothing that kind of invoked a sense of where well, this is this is different. Um, and the move to four five one with 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 Carusa, it, it, it that's more of a kind of realignment to help the team um, in in an, in an attack shape and to try and get more support from from the flanks. Um, but you know, she she's obviously not the bold type, um, and um, you know my concern after yesterday we spoke about the missed opportunity, which I still feel it was in some sort of sense that that. Mm. The, the response was too belated to the fact that Australia were poor and were struggling and were potentially vulnerable, perhaps more on the floor than the air. Um, and that, you know, if 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 this game against Canada forms a similar pattern, how belated will the response be again? And how quickly can they um can they adapt? Can Ireland adapt and 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 respond with an intention of their own or even start with an intention of their own? And you know, we don't know if Canada if that's their poor performance, we don't know. I mean, uh, Chrissy Sinclair, um, I'm always wary of these things, but she snubbed the media zone, the mix zone afterwards, which, as you know, in major tournaments is an obligatory thing where players kind of walk through that's and, true, yeah. um, uh, you know, can either pretend not to be interested. Uh, and just on a side note, although I'm always wary of, of congratulating players for performing media duties when it should be their duty as a professional, but a lot of the Irish players, including Marissa Shaver, did media um, Marissa Shiva, apologies, didn't mediate uh, after the game yesterday. Um, it's a side note, but I think it's worth it's worth yeah. saying because I've been at so many, so many, 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 many men's games, especially in tournaments, down the years uh, where they have uh, not chose to do so. So fair play to them on that score. Um, and I'm not looking for any brownie points from anybody there. Uh, I just think it's worth noting. But you know. With the upset that they had with the the pay dispute and the manager nearly quit and didn't play well yesterday, uh, Jesse Fleming, the penalty taker, was injured. That's why Christy Sinclair, she's not a penalty taker. That's why she took it. Again, <clears throat> looked like a, a, weak, a weak penalty against Steph, Steph uh, Catley's. It was a, a three out of ten effort against the nine and a half out of ten effort. So, you know, it remains to be seen how they kind of wash mm. up out of this, uh, you know, as we say, and and like the Irish confidence, the mood seemed to be still there. Still, we we'll see a bit more tomorrow. We're meeting them in the in the hotel. They had their, in terms of housekeeping, they had their kind of recovery session. No injuries out of it, apart from Katie's fingers, which we'll come to in a second. Um, but they they their mood wasn't rocked. Their sense of who they are wasn't rocked, and there was a tacit admission, um. That yeah, they need to produce more, but yeah. you know they kind of always say that. So yeah, I mean it's 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 um it's still there for them. That route is still there for them, despite the fact, as you say, they're playing Canada, a nominally a higher ranked team. But you know Australia were were even on the evidence of Friday supposed to be this kind of superior force, and obviously they didn't have Sam Kerr, but they were quite ordinary. Yeah, tell tell us about Katie McCabe then, um, because we saw her obviously she you know had that collision. She she came off. She kind of came off the worst herself on that occasion. She came off then, got her fingers taped up. Um, is one? How are her fingers? I, I think I think one broke. I mean, I think right. they basically uh, these they were taped it these together. Were kind of yeah, tied together. Yeah, she kind of fell. I thought she got got winded or something, but um, you actually hear her say, "I think it's broken." Um, so there was a bit of jiggery procre as they say with the uh, digits um but yeah it, it was just funny i mean you saw the um there's a wonderful picture online of her uh, and it seemed like she was attempting a kung fu kick but actually uh watching the incident back 
she's tackled. She's actually underneath the player. So it's one of those kind of obstacle illusions. Um, but yeah, it, it was extraordinary. And it just, you know, um, it was too late to make a lot of the newspapers. But um, one of the uh, websites, uh, news.com and um, the Courier Mail, I mean, they're speaking this morning about um, Katie McCabe uh, cause, prompting a, a, her biff with the Australians, causing a frenzy around the world. Um, uh, cup, cup shame. This kind of it was kind of just amusing. I, I just yeah. Of, you um, had a piece this morning, Dave, uh, on kind of some of the blowback that uh, Katie's got over there. <clears throat> um, some of it is some of it justified, or is it all just over the top? Uh, I think you know, I, I, I like any media. I don't want to characterize the Australian media, but I mean, they did, they did have Ben Stokes in a nappy recently. I mean, they, 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 they do tend to sometimes go wildly over the top in terms of their of their coverage and 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 an, an element of partisanship as well. Um, uh, there was even criticism of one of their pundits for, you know, being a bit honest about the performance. So y- there is that kind of element. Uh, in the coverage, but you know, it's just kind of colourful and 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 just something to be brought out. And there was a bit of, I think, um, criticism as well on um, on BBC as well from Karen Bardsley about you know Kate. Well, like you know, we know what Katie McCabe is like, and she was effusive about liking the the, the physicality. And like as Barry Powell alludes to afterwards, and and uh, you know, the Aussies were pretty physical themselves, and um, it was that kind of game. It was a pretty pretty grim, gritty, dare affair with with a lot of kind of um it was uh, kind of junior P championship stuff at times. It was it was fairly um fairly one dimensional and brutish, you know, uh, in the context of a game that you were hoping some football may break out, but very rarely did it. But um listen, that's Katie McCabe's game. She loves that. And like that energizes her players, like whether it's that like little run she made from left to right over the halfway line, which kind of it almost brings the team with her. And and even I thought it was very influential or indicative the first half. She kind of, towards the end of it, the Australians were playing kind of in the um, the right the right third, just outside the, um, the, the the final third on the right side. And she just stepped up out of left back and, and stole the ball, which kind of basically told the, the Australians, you're, you're going nowhere here. We we have your mark. So she sets the tone. She sets the standard <laughs> in terms of that. And um, you know, they call it in England. We call it here. You know, shit housery. That's kind of what it is. She's that kind of just you know gnarly nuggety player. But she has the class. Um, sadly, uh, not the finish last night as we um as we uh, as the nation mourned um. If you were, if you were a colleague of mine, said if you if you were to if you were asked for you know a one nil down scenario and a chance for Katie McCabe in the last minute, you would have taken it, and um, but sadly it didn't work. But yeah, no, she's she's um she she laugh at that. I mean, if we're talking to her, she'll laugh at all that kind of coverage, and it's just kind of and it's kind of it's good. It's kind of it, it happens in the in other in other sports in the men's game. It's just a bit. It's just a bit of fun. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, Dave, we're going to let you go there now because you were one of those uh, crazy journalists who got no sleep last night, got straight from uh, working through the night in Sydney on a flight to Brisbane. No sleep yet. Uh, like, how are you still functioning? What's well, what's carrying say, you through right now? <laughs> well, coffee is quite good here. I mean, I wouldn't be uh, one of these um Especially, it seems to happen a lot in rugby that they 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 go on about coffee all the time. Um, but I'm beginning to see why because um, yeah, we basically arrived in here at um less stupid o'clock than the flight time, and um the hotel room obviously wasn't ready, uh, so we left another piece of luggage here and just yeah, my myself and another colleague went for a, a coffee and um some glass of egg. And then went for another coffee just to get Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi is not great in this town and um, just to do a bit of work. So um, that was it. We just had coffee until the room was ready at about uh, yeah one o'clock, two o'clock. And then I actually was falling asleep waiting for the room to be ready. And then um, when the kind lady nudged me to say the room was ready, I couldn't sleep once I reached the bed that I had been Always trying happens. to reach. 
for about 24 hours. So we'll see how it goes in the next few hours. And we're speaking to the Irish players tomorrow and we'll be hail and hearty and we go again before we have to do another potentially jet-lagging flight to Perth um, earlier in the week. But that's the World Cup. It's a global, global venture. Yeah, never ends. Well, that chair you're sitting on uh, certainly looks quite comfortable, Dave. So that might draw out a few bit of... <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> Good night, Dave. Good night, all. Take care. Good luck.